roll at T minus 4 hours, 33 minutes, 45 seconds and counting. The external tank is approximately one third full of liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen. The eco sensor system is continuing under test and evaluation, and not just the uh, sensors themselves, but the entire system from the sensors all the way through the pass through connector and up to the flight deck, an end to end test. And looking at data, not just characteristic of the failure that we had, but uh, other potential uh, failure modes as well. So that uh, once this system gets the uh, good housekeeping seal of approval, we know that we'll be in pretty good shape for a launch today, but we'll be continuing to watch the sensors all the way through the countdown up to uh, T minus and nine, up to T minus nine minutes. This is shuttle launch control at T minus four hours, 24 minutes, 43 seconds and counting. All of the pre-planned tests that the test team was doing here in the firing room have been completed and so far all of the sensors are performing as they should. However, there are some tests that the system will be going through automatically on its own once we enter stable replenish and when that occurs if all of our sensors still are uh, are operating properly that would be a pretty good point at which to say we know that we've got uh, four good sensors even though we'll be continuing to look at it right up to the T minus nine uh, nine minute built-in hold where we'll conduct a final test I think uh, we can Pretty well once we enter stable replenish and we go through this automatic cycling of the sensors, uh, know that uh, we can probably declare success at that point. But uh, right now we're past the point where we've had problems before. All of the sensors right now appear to be looking like they are operating as they should. And we'll get a final uh, or, or a tentative uh, final status once we enter stable replenish at about 8.20 a.m. this morning. Meanwhile, our uh, external tank is uh, between 35 and 40 percent full. And as we mentioned, uh, the tank will be completely filled at about 8.20 this morning. We go into stable replenish, and that's the point where we'll send the final inspection team out to the launch pad, and we'll enter a planned two-hour built-in hold. At T minus four hours, 22 minutes, 50 seconds, and counting. Shuttle launch control at T minus four hours, 10 minutes, and counting. Right now in the countdown, the large dish antennas at the Mila tracking station are being aligned with launch pad 39A to provide our communications with the shuttle during ascent. Once they're aligned, then they will go into a low power mode, and then at about an hour before liftoff, they'll transition to high power for final checks. Once the space shuttle lifts off from the launch pad, the Mila tracking station will be providing all of the air-to-ground voice data and telemetry to Mission Control in Houston. Mila will be following the vehicle for the first minute, but then because of signal attenuation caused by the plume of the solid rocket boosters, NASA's Ponce de Leon Inlet Tracking Station, located 35 miles north of Cape Canaveral, will provide coverage beginning with the second minute of flight for about a 90-second period. Mila then resumes tracking until launch plus seven and a half minutes, at which time the switch will be made to the Tedris East Tracking and Data Relay Satellite. A UHF, a UHF uh, and tracking antenna on the ground at Mila is also receiving air-to-ground voice communications with the space shuttle until full communications through the Tetris E satellite is assured. Mila will continue to track the vehicle until loss of signal, which occurs 8 minutes and 10 seconds after launch. Also available during space station launches from the ground is the Wallops Island tracking station in Virginia. 
tracking the space shuttle as it moves up the east coast of the United States. At 36 minutes into the mission, the coverage will shift from the Tedris East satellite to the Tedris Indian Ocean satellite, bridging the gap over the Indian Ocean until the Tedris West satellite can acquire 49 minutes after launch. And then Tedris West and Tedris East will be providing the coverage for the duration of the mission until time for re-entry, at which point the Indian Ocean Tedris satellite will again provide data on the firing of the orbital maneuvering system by, uh, orbital maneuvering system for the reentry burn. If uh, we are no go for a launch today, then tomorrow's forecast calls for only a 40% chance of not meeting our launch weather criteria and 30% on Saturday. But as of uh, the time we began fueling this morning, we still had a 70% chance of not meeting our launch weather criteria this afternoon. But again, it will all be in the timing of uh, when that front has uh, direct effect on the Cape Canaveral vicinity. And our weather reconnaissance uh, aircraft uh, should have uh, a lot of input to the, uh, to the team about the observed conditions, particularly since clouds and showers are a large part of our launch weather criteria. Astronaut Steve Lindsay will be taking off in the T-38 jet this afternoon, a little after noon, to begin his weather reconnaissance. He'll do that for about an hour in the T-38, and then about 1.20 p.m. he will take off in the shuttle training aircraft to further assess the current weather, as well as weather's direct effect on the handling characteristics of the orbiter in the event of a return to launch site aboard. He'll be shooting approaches to the runway at the shuttle landing facility, judging the visibility and assessing the wind conditions, particularly the effect of a uh, crosswind, which uh, may be somewhat of a factor today. And uh, Steve Lindsay will be staying aloft uh, through launch in the shuttle training aircraft. All of the standard weather observations and forecasting normally performed before launch are being done today. The final phase of the forecasting began yesterday with a series of balloon releases. In the last 24 hours leading up to launch, up to 24 weather balloons of different types are scheduled to be released. Today, a total of nine Raywinson balloons will be released, which collect data on temperature, humidity, wind speed, and direction, and barometric pressure up to about 100,000 feet. Six gym spheres are also to be released, which provide very highly accurate data on wind speed and direction up to about 60,000 feet. All of this data is reduced and very late in the countdown allows the flight dynamics officer to select the proper computer program that's on board Atlantis that will allow the space shuttle's onboard computers to respond properly to the wind conditions as it climbs through the different layers of the lower atmosphere. And besides the Solid rocket booster retrieval ships are also relaying data from approximately 140 miles downrange. And there are two fully instrumented weather buoys offshore relating data back to the Cape Canaveral forecast facility every hour. They're located at about 20 nautical miles and 120 nautical miles offshore. At T minus three hours, 35 minutes, 20 seconds and counting, this is shuttle launch control.